Okay. So welcome back to another episode of Regspirations. It's been way too long since I've done these, so I'm trying to get back in the habit. Thank you, Deb Kelly, for joining me from Vermont today. Um, Deb is one of those people that I'm so fortunate to have connected with through rug cooking. Without rug cooking, we wouldn't know each other. And mm -hmm. that makes me sad. So thanks to rug cooking <laughs> for one more thing. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard to know where to start, but, um, we'll just get right into it with the questions. I asked the same sort of six questions to everybody, um, and, uh, we'll see where it takes us. Um, so welcome Deb, first of all, thank you for doing this. Um, would you like to, to be here? Would you like to tell us about what or who or how you got started and when I should have when in there too, um, in rug making, what was your, your process like? Um, I grew up doing needlepoint and embroidery with my mom. She mm. actually had a store called Thimble in the Green. Oh, and uh, it was really, it was really fun. I really enjoyed that. And then, uh, but I wasn't as a perfectionist as my mom. And my grandmother was a rug hooker. She hooked over in Kenny Bunk with Joan Moshimer and that gang there. And I would go once in a while to tour classes with her and I just loved the feel of the wool and the colors and just like I did. I, I love doing handwork. And mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how I got into it. And grandma and I started hooking together and I hooked here in Vermont too with a group and we've had a great time um, doing that. And so I, I still do some embroidery once in a while, but I prefer the rug. I'm, I love to rug hook every single day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't, after a few days, I start having withdrawals. <laughs> yes. Yes. I can understand that. <laughs> I really love it. It's really part of me. <laughs> and have you found, like, if you started with your grandmother, I'm assuming as a young girl, did you find time your whole life to do it or did was it something that you put down for a while and then started again when you had more time no once I started I, I really <laughs> found time and I, I started with some big rugs you know I started with a farm that was the first one I did but basically it was the story of the farm here in Shoreham and it's a pretty good sized rug and then I did a, a couple other story rugs and uh I read um, Mary Lee Burton's book and uh, she really inspired me to do story rugs. And I pretty much have done story rugs in between all the others uh, all my life now. Yeah. And I enjoy researching the history and telling the stories with, about the family. And uh, I continue, I think I probably produced, I don't know, 10, 12 story rugs over the years. Oh, oh. yeah if not more. And um, they're important to me. And it's, I like telling stories too. I think that's part of rug hooking because every rug has its story. Mm -hmm. And um, we're preserving a bit of our history and our culture when we do the rug hooking. So absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. And that, and that the when was when I was early, it was in my 20s. So I was very fortunate to start early mm -hmm. and have that opportunity because um, the supplies and everything to get started, it, you know, is a challenge. And Graham helped me with that. So I'm mom um, in their own way. So and there was a great group here in Vermont and Beverly Conway was part of that beginning group um, that we hooked together. So in my yeah. mid 20s. So that's, that's how okay. I got started. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And I mean, it's, I think you're the first, one of the first, if not, um, hookers that found it young, but then was able to continue sort of without any major stop it. Like a lot of people had to stop or chose to, or life interrupted, but you mm -hmm. made time. I like that. I like, you know, I think that's... I even hooked at my daughter's basketball games. I'd bring a rug <laughs> and hook there during the games, <laughs> Why not? you know? So, yeah, I found time and, yeah. you know, you're sitting around a lot in the winter. So it really worked well to do it then. So I, I do have one that has a big B in it. 
because that's where it was booked in a bunch of ball games. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I was a knitter before I found hooking. And right. I can remember like, oh, I I remember being at the hospital in labor or waiting for labor to get on with it. Um, and which socks I was knitting at the time, like what color they were. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> yeah, I just remember those yeah. weird you know, oh yeah, those were the socks that yeah. I knit during, you know, this period. And this was... Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, I did knitting too at some point too, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, Do you have a part of the process that's your favorite? Like the planning the rug, the working on it, the finishing, the sharing it. It could be, you know, sharing the story and the rug with others mm -hmm. or supplies. A lot of people love the shopping. <laughs> I, I, I love the whole aspect of it it's hard for me to put my finger on one part of it but i i do enjoy prep prepping a large rug and the mm -hmm. creating of how i want it to be and then doing the colors uh, i i find the the color selection is really i could do it all day long oh let's try this let's yes. try this you know so there's so many rich beautiful colors with the wool and everything else and the fibers we have today that we're not just dealing with the old you know pair of wool pants anymore mm -hmm. and um which still worked well in the old days but i um i i do enjoy the color process mm -hmm. and as you said the, the other part i enjoy is the storytelling at the end and putting that on the rug yeah. So yeah. I now have found a place um, here in Montpelier, Patty Prague. She um, helps me with the labels and uh, helps me so I can put the whole story on two labels yes. if I have to. Yeah. And then and then I can sew it right onto the rug. So mm -hmm. that that really helps preserve it, too. And you help me put more labels on, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every rug deserves a label <laughs> i used to put my initials and the date on the front and yeah. um now i i do the labels and but every once in a while i'll still put my name the dk oh, and yeah. the date on the front so it depends on the rug itself right yeah so. yeah um yeah for sure and yeah putting the label is so important but the color planning i wanted to ask you are do you change your mind because i love color planning too and then i think i get it like i think i'm committed and then i will be hooking and two weeks later be like oh no that doesn't work anymore and change some aspect of the color so i'm curious do you stick to it um no <laughs> i change it oh good <laughs> but with, it stays within the same family it yeah. might not be the right value but it will mm. stay within the same family. Um, I'm not, I don't take it and like, here I am, purple, turquoise and, you know, maroon pink, and I'm not gonna go green, uh, like dark green and then gold and blue. Uh, I'm not gonna change it, but within this, like even here, this tree needs to be changed a little bit, but it, it has to do with the value. Yeah, which is more important than the actual color yeah. sometimes, so. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. interesting yeah yep. I just I, I'm always curious and admire those people that can pick colors and then stick to them like <laughs> <laughs> I have not not found that uh, to be my experience so and I think um, as you go along and you learn how to hook um, with value you can change the color and it's still it gives it a little bit more oomph is what I want to say rather than all the same yeah so. yeah yeah definitely is there anything in your sort of rug hooking journey that you wish you'd learned earlier? I mean, you get the fortune to be surrounded by, you know, a lot of talented, uh, well-known hookers, but mm -hmm. that you, or things maybe that you teach young hookers that, or new hookers that you meet now that you're like, oh, don't worry about, or this is an important lesson. What is it you'd want to share with people? Um, I think the most important thing in rug hooking is to be yourself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will say, oh, you should do it this way and maybe you should do it that way. But in the heart of it, you need to be yourself and uh, you can do patterns and you can learn and, and continue to create. Um, but if you feel in your heart that the, this is the way you want it to be, then let it be. 
Yeah. And that's what I will, you know, it's okay. You know, it doesn't have to be this perfect way that, you know, that someone thinks it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So you know, I would say just be yourself and go with the flow um, yeah. and not worry about what other people think. It's more important what, what you think yourself mm -hmm. and uh, in your heart, which you know is right. So, and you can learn from a lot of great teachers in different techniques. And there are mm -hmm. many different ways, all the different million hooks that you can use and, yeah. you know, different cutters and, you'll find your own path and and go with what is the best for you. This yeah. be my advice. So, yeah. Which yeah. is interesting cuz I I totally agree with you as you know. <laughs> um but a lot of new hookers sometimes struggle with that or I I get asked mm -hmm. the question like, "Well, what is the right way?" or "What is, mm -hmm. you know, is this right?" Oh, like, "Am I doing it right?" <laughs> and it's always right. like, "Well, are you happy with it? Do you like how it looks?" and you right. know. Yeah. I mean, a lot people are really specific about how high the loop is supposed to be. You know, I guess it depends on the purpose of it. If you want it to be in a museum in a masterpiece theater yeah. thing, yeah, I guess, but I don't have those, that purpose in my life. It's more to give gifts and create stories. So, yeah. 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 So I think that's such an important lesson. Um, it is. And that being said, do you have favorite like foundation fabrics or materials or tools that just, you know, make this experience mm. special that you wouldn't want to go without if you didn't have to? Well, I, you know, we started on burlap um, years ago and then we went to monk's cloth and now we're on linen and I prefer the linen over any other. The burlap to me was um, a little dusty. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> Um, but and it, it doesn't last as well as the linen. It, the linen is more durable to me, and mm -hmm. uh, I like the I like doing primitive more than I do fine. So it, it allows to have bigger holes too for the um, wider cut. Mm -hmm. So I do prefer the linen, and um, I like unbleached. I can do bleached if you have a ton of details, but I prefer the unbleached linen. I my hook, you know, I've tried a, a many different hooks. Um, I have this big Hartman hook for the big wide, but I, I still go back to my Moshimer hook yes. that I had. I started with, and you know, yep. and I like the longer shank on them. And but yeah, once you learn with a certain hook that it's a technique for yourself, um, I would stick with that. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, nice and. The last is the wool. Mm. I know there's lots of fibers out there in yarn and wool, and I just I prefer the hundred percent wool. So, mm -hmm. and the wool strips, not wool yarn. Right. Yeah. I do use the wool yarn, and I actually have a stocking going in here. There's some stocking oh. in here, but because um, it does offer a, a little more vibrancy um, mm -hmm. to the piece, but um, but I. I, I'm still more of a hundred percent wool. So yeah. Drips. yeah. Well, and your rug, I've had the uh, fortune to visit your homes and they are being used. Like they are rugs on the floor and yeah. people are walking on them. And even though I want to tip around them because they are so beautiful. <laughs> they uh, are, well, they are the dogs cute. think they're there the minute you put them down. Yeah. You know? oh, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. Yeah, yeah so well, the there's a couple fabric. on the wall, but but the ones that I the bigger ones they go right on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So the wool fabric will last for many, many generations, hopefully. Yeah, that's right. I do have a few of those. Yeah. Um this is a hard, I think this is a hard question, but could you describe what rug cooking does for you? Like, why do you keep coming back to it? I mean, I know you're multi-talented and could do other things, but you choose to come back to rug cooking. First off, the community of the people is really special mm -hmm. for me. Um, I think that I've forged friendships over the years that are really fun. Mm -hmm. and and caring individuals um also i find that 
the rug hooking, doing the repetitive motion has always helped. It's called serotonin, a hormone, and it always helps keep you happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the joy of being able to complete something and see the beauty of it and uh, creating, overall just creating um, is really healthy. And I wish everyone created every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it makes a, a richer, more peaceful harmony in the world. And mm -hmm. uh, that's why I rug hook. Yeah. And I want others to rug hook. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> should rug hook. <laughs> Everybody should rug hook. You're right. <laughs> or at least try it. I always feel like give it a try. Like <laughs> Right. Try try something with your hands, you know, yeah. whether it's a paintbrush or wood or whatever it is. Yeah. Create. Yeah. 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 So so you shared with me one of your fabulous rugs. I'm going to bring it up here on the screen so we can share and look at it and admire. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh sorry about that. All uh, right. Hey, why is it not? I want to just get that on the screen. Oh. Right. Sorry, I was trying to get rid of this side piece here, but there we go. We'll just pull that over. Um. There we go. Can you see the your barn? Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. So, well, first of all, tell us about the size of this because this isn't a little wee <laughs> rug. <laughs> it's hard to tell on a computer screen. So, we'll oh, start wow. with the uh, yeah the dimensions approximately of this rug. I think it's like three and a half by five. I think so. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a large yeah. rug. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is in a series of barn rugs that you've done. Do you want Correct. to tell? Yeah. I, uh, this barn is, it's, there's not many left in, in the world, at least in, the, in Vermont. Um, this is an older barn um, here in Shorm and it was built in the early 1800s and it was used as a mule barn actually for the canal boats. So when they got in a certain place um, where they needed some extra power, the canal boats, and it was too deep water or something, they would then use these mules along the shore to pull the canal boats. And, and the Burley brothers over in Ticonderoga um, helped built this barn and had the farm here. And um, it was then converted to dairy. It was a dairy and now it's a hay barn uh, holds hay um, it's slate roof and it um, has taken Joe and I a lot you know a lot to maintain it uh, and it's it's a beautiful beautiful architecture the cupola to me is really beautiful so I have you know every day I'm taking a picture of it at one point or another and um, I decided one year to do uh, rugs uh, from every angle so east west north south of course I just don't do one right yeah but uh, <laughs> but it's been really enjoyable and each one is is unique unto itself and has its own little story in each one and this is kind of in the summer with a tree there's a tree of a very large maple tree um, on the west side of it with a uh, the sun behind it and shading the barn. And um, it was really enjoyable to put together. It was from a photo, because mm -hmm. I'm always taking photographs. I love to take photographs. And I enlarged the photograph and, and got it on canvas um, at Beverly's. And uh, then the wolves were helped. Also, um, some of the wool came from Wanda Keir. And uh, she helped me with the coloring of the barn also. But um, it's been a real joy for me to do my own designs on this barn. So yeah. it's been fun. It is just magnificent. I mean, it's magnificent on screen, but in person, it is really um, the colors of the barn and the shadowing or shading of the shadows. I can almost right. feel like the movement, you know, like, which is really hard to capture 
Um, it's just beautiful. And what okay. cut do you like to use, Deb? Well, this this is done in a uh, six and eight, um, and I I prefer uh, to use six and eights. Um, mm. So it's in a wider cut. It's beautiful. And uh, I I uh, didn't really have to pull out too much on this. It was amazing. I just kind of went in. Just keep going. Yeah, kept going. I started at the front, um, at the bottom, and worked up to the top. Mm -hmm. And uh, it worked fairly well that way. So, but yeah, I think I captured her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Magnificent. And I didn't know the story about the mules. That is so neat. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's got a good history, this barn, mm -hmm. um, like most older structures. So on the architecture, I think the other angles of the that I did too. each each angle that I did east, west, north, south has a different perspective mm -hmm. on each one. So that that that's what's been fun, too. I'm learning more and more about perspective. Yeah. And you're good at that, too, Robin. <laughs> well, I try, but this is really special. Because Tell us about the couple. Like, I've seen it in person as well, so I have a different understanding. But mm -hmm. I think people that are not familiar, and we don't necessarily around Ontario see barns, or I haven't anyway, like mm -hmm. that, uh, with that kind of... So even the dimensions of that in real life is quite yeah. large. Like, the it's cupola is a... A 14 by 14 room mm -hmm. in itself. So it's fairly large and it's fairly tall also. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's something like 20 feet high. So yeah, it's pretty high. Mm -hmm. So the the louvers in it um, and the overall cupola itself needs maintenance probably every five, six years. It has slate on the top of it also with a... Um, you know a lightning rod yeah so, um, but yeah i've been up there um in the cupola and the view is really beautiful <laughs> and is that why they would have built them like is it because that way they could see far like is what would no, it was it was built for um the dynamics of drying the hay drying oh. the hay in the barn so it created the, the atmosphere so that the hay uh -huh. would dry better right. and you always needed that um to get the moisture content out otherwise the barns a lot of them burned yeah you know they caught on fire from the hay they yeah. got too hot with the moisture so wow. that was the main feature of the cupola <laughs> it's pretty interesting having that window way up high there yeah. too <laughs> It is. It's very fascinating. I mean, I love barns just in general. Yeah. I love the stories, but this one is such a unique structure that, um, and yeah. captured here. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a joy. It's been a real joy for me. It was not a tour at all. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I recommend anybody who loves to rug hook or anybody out there who wants to sees a barn they love take a photo of it and let's preserve them you know mm -hmm. so for future generations yeah mm -hmm. yeah because barns today i mean i understand the you know engineering requirement and everything to modernize mm -hmm. them but they are not they don't have the character that the old barns have <laughs> yeah they're more warehousey <laughs> they're more warehouse and yeah. yeah aesthetics are not necessarily the priority uh, whereas I feel like, you know, generations past still took a lot of pride in the beauty of the structure. Right. Uh, maybe, yeah. you know, the function was obviously important, but the beauty was also important. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Well, it's stunning. I'll uh, go back to us. There we go. Um, well, thank you so much, Deb. I love chatting with you and seeing your amazing work. I wish we could show everybody your whole house, but it would take hours. <laughs> because you have gorgeous rugs everywhere. Yeah. Um, I, it is. is it is. Um, when you go into a rug hookers, hookers home, um, the fabric is everywhere. You know, and it's not necessarily uh, all one it's a multitude of uh, colors and it's a whole different 
to me, coziness. Mm-hmm. I go into a modern homes today with nothing that's like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't want to sit down and read a book necessarily. It's just me. Yeah, I, I, I love having all the fabrics around and things like that. So. I I but, totally understand, and it's not a mess to me. I don't see <laughs> piles of wool, yarn, fabric, whatever. To me, it's like the possibility is yeah. there. Um, it's exciting. It's interesting. Even if it's not my piles, I'm always like, oh, what's going to happen with this combination? Or you know the it, yeah yeah it's um, it's the fun of the color all all around you yeah i think it i think it keeps you on a happier note yeah well does me (laughs) it does for me yeah on that note we thank you deb and uh, i look forward to your future projects and i'm sure there'll be many many to come so thank you for sharing yeah thank you robin i always enjoy being with you too have a great day Thank you.